This is the 2024 Land Rover Defender S. Is it the most luxurious 4x4? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today, Carrie and I are at Land Rover of Shreveport, and we're gonna show you this Tasman Blue. I really like this color. I'm gonna let Carrie give you a good look without my shadow on it at this exterior color. I'm normally not a big fan of blue, but this is just kind of a different look. I like the hue that it presents. It just looks nice. It looks a little more high-end, we'll say. It's better than just something plain, such as white or black or whatever. I know everybody has their taste, but that's whatever the case is. I tend to like this. Tell me what your thoughts are. If you want to know more about this particular model or anything else they have here at Land Rover or Shreveport, check out the link in the description of the video. Real quick here on the front end, obviously, we're going to have plenty of LED lighting. Premium LED daytime running lights, LED headlights, and have your fog lights down here on the lower portion of the bumper. I don't have any of this on right now because you really couldn't see it that well anyway if I did. Raised lettering with Defender right here. It looks nice. I know some people like the raised lettering. Some people would like to see something that's maybe sunk into the hood a little bit. Not necessarily stick on. Tell me what your thoughts are. But the thing I like about this generation of the Defender is that it looks like a Defender. There's nothing that really you look at it and say, oh, that's not a Defender. What is that? All-wheel drive, obviously, this model, no matter what people say in the comment section, is very capable off-road. You do have air suspension. You can obviously raise and lower that multiple driving modes. Let's talk a little bit about our all-terrain tires here and their size. We're looking at 255 on our width, a 60 series sidewall, going to be wrapped around those 20-inch wheels. And I like the fact, as you'll see later in the video, it's very obvious that it does come with a full-size spare, very easy to access. Now, if you're not real strong, it might be a little harder because you have to take it up off the back door, but yeah, most people can probably do that. Quick, quick look here at the remote. Nothing out of the ordinary there, but that's what you have. The Land Rover logo is going to be on the back. Just pretty standard issue here. But the good thing is, is that when I lock the interior, you're going to see the power functionality of the side view mirrors. They do fold in. There is your turn signal indicator that's built in to these heated and power adjustable side view mirrors. You do have blind spot monitoring built in. And against this Tasman blue exterior color, I like the gloss black that's here. I know things are kind of printed up a little bit. We had to wash it off earlier. Didn't really have a good way to quickly dry it, just one of those things. But you'll see, I think it's a nice balance of the gloss black. You're also going to have that with your roof rails up there. You can get the crossbars. There's really a lot of gear you can buy to add to these models, depending on how you're willing to spec them out and how much money you're willing to spend. Now, this is a two-row, so it's kind of interesting that it still comes with the Safari windows up here. But I guess somebody could turn around and look from one side to the other, but it's there. One thing that is very nice is visibility is very good here because you have these nice tall windows all over the vehicle. That makes a big difference in visibility. So you don't have to worry about any issues there, even here with this rear door. And as I said, here is our full size spare tire. You can see how you'd have to pick this up and get it off. Don't know that that's that terribly hard for a lot of people, but if you need some help, make sure you get that. But the good thing is that it's here and it's easy to access. And with our rear lights, the tail lights, everything that's back here, it still looks very Defender. That squared look, which is what the Defender is known for. When you need to pull somebody out, you've got tow hooks a couple of different places as far as that goes. This is a very versatile model. Let's talk about what's under the hood and see what this particular model has to offer of the different engines available. And real quick, I promised we we're going to take a look at the engine in that Defender S, but since we had this model over here with all the different accessories, at least a lot of them. I wanted to show you some of the things you could add to your Defender S. You can add this on any model you want to. But we've got a few things back here. You've got your shovel and you've got your rack and everything here that you can hold those on. A nice little holding place for that. We go over here. This is not that unusual, but you have your box right here. We see that on a few others that we've reviewed in the past. You'll find your key right here, your lock right there. The keys are usually in the glove box. They're smaller, so you have to look for those. And then there's what I was talking about earlier. You can store a lot up there with that setup right there. In fact, there's already something on the other side that I want to show you. 
some things that we haven't seen in previous videos. First of all, you're going to notice that when you're out on the trail, obviously, if you run out of gas, well, here's your solution. You fill these with gas. These are just gas tanks, basically, that you can use. Just true off-roading capability. Whether you're in the snow or the mud and you get stuck, that's what these are for. You put those under the tires, you gain traction, and hopefully you get enough to be able to get unstuck and get out of where you are. Nothing unusual here, but we do have the assist steps that are here that have obviously been used. We also have our snorkel right here. I don't know for sure about these LED lights. I don't know if those are Land Rover or not. I'm guessing they probably are this because this is the Trek edition. You'll see that on the hood right here with the wrap. So somebody can probably tell us down in the comments. We're just kind of winging it on that. We didn't look it up, don't have time. But you can also see the addition of the winch that is available. So you can put that on right there. Everything to mount that in is here. Literally everything you could need for an off-road excursion. And here under the hood of the mild hybrid electric version of this model, that's what it is, a three liter six cylinder. That doesn't mean that it's low on horsepower. A lot of people hear six cylinder and think, I really want the V8, can't blame you for that. But in this case, we're looking at 395 horsepower, 406 pounds-feet of torque. It's mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Let's go over here and take a look at the sticker so I can give you the MPGs. People are going to ask if I don't do this, so I have to cover it. 17 city, 20 highway, 18 combined, 5.6 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. And we looked at those gas tanks that are on the side that you can add if you want to. But how much will your actual gas tank hold? Well, first of all, I like the fact that it's not capless fuel fill. You could actually buy a locking gas cap for this if you wanted to. And when you fill that up, it has a potential to hold 23.8 gallons. And as far as towing goes, up to 8,201 pounds. That one pound makes a big difference, doesn't it? Maximum cargo capacity up to 69 cubic feet. Now, let me show you a couple of things here real quick as far as maximizing cargo space goes. You're going to want to lower your headrests like this. And there's two different ways you can do this. Depending on what your situation is, you could just lower the seats like this. But they actually do fold completely flat. And so I'm going to show that. There we go right there. If you want to see how I did that, I'm going to let Carrie come over here to the passenger side real quick and we'll show you how easy that is to do with these 60-40 split rear seats. So you'll see right here there's a tab right there. I'm just going to pull up on that, and there you go. And that's how I wound up making these completely flat. We lower our headrests, and obviously your other seat over there on the right-hand side does the same thing. But that's not all. I promise I'm not selling you OxyClean. Sounds like an infomercial, doesn't it? But let's go over here and take a look at some of the features in this area. Now we will find obviously some cargo lighting. Kind of have to look inside because it's angled towards the front. I do like that. I think that's a good thing. And over here on this side, we're going to have the ability to raise and lower the vehicle. I'm going to yeah, let Carrie go out and show you what's going on. So I'm going to start dropping the vehicle. I'll let that come on up or actually raising it. See how high it goes up. And then, so depending on if you need to load something and it's just easier to get it all the way up high, well, that helps. And then we'll go ahead and lower it all the way back down. Just to see how far it goes, it's still going, going a long way. And if you need to do something where you don't want to pick it up quite as high, well, you can do that as well. And there was something I know Carrie was starting to show you right here. I want to get back to that real quick. Two interesting things here. Number one, you have those little straps right there where things can be stored that will fit. It will hold them in place when you're out on the trail. But here's something interesting. Let's see if I can get this to open for me. I don't know for sure what goes in there. Somebody might be able to tell me. Maybe you could hang something off of that. But there's space in there. I can stick my entire finger in there. Maybe a bag holder or something like that. I don't know. Somebody tell us what that is in the comments section. And real quick, a little bit of storage space underneath plus the tools to change a tire in case you're wondering where that's located. If you ever need to change a tire and you're looking for a quick tutorial, also a 12 volt power outlet right there that we missed earlier. There's quite a bit going on here, enough to store some things back here. 
especially when we lower the seats. 69 cubic feet, do you think that's enough? And one more thing here, I'm probably opening this up for comments now, but let's show you what's here because people are gonna say, oh yeah, you're gonna need that on that Land Rover because they're always breaking down and you need that triangle to let people know you're broken down on the side of the road. I'm not gonna take it out of the plastic. Well, actually, I guess I can because this end is open. So let's try not to lose that. Here's what it is, just an emergency flare. Maybe you're out on the trail and you want people to know that you're there. See if I can do this. How talented am I at figuring this out? See if my engineering skills will let me do that. I'm not really an engineer, by the way. But there's what it is. So you could put it out next to the vehicle, maybe something like that, something along those lines. But that's what that's for. Now let the comments begin. <laughs> And by the way, going back to that previous scene, let the comments begin, especially from people who say Land Rovers break down all the time and you've never owned one. Haha. <laughs> okay, sorry, we're laughing at you, not with you. Just having some fun. If you get offended at that, it's okay. You'll, you'll live, I promise. So what do we have here with our door panels? Well, let's take a look. First of all, let's give it the old armrest test. We'll let Carrie give us the ultimate verdict on that. Thumbs up, thumbs down, definitely thumbs up. And that's really good because you do have high-end luxury materials here, but they're durable for obvious reasons. You've got the exposed screws just to give it that Land Rover feel and look. You'll also find, well, the door bin right here. I'd call that more of a bottle holder than a door bin maybe, but it's there. Now you'll notice that the interior here is kind of interesting with the multiple contrast of colors. You've got this kind of white here that's kind of a textured material. We'll have to work hard to keep that clean. And that's in a few different areas of the vehicle. It sure looks nice, that's for sure. Now for you parents out there that are wondering about the latch system here, it's here, it's exposed, but might be a little challenging to get the child safety seats hooked in there because you can't really get your finger underneath there. I don't know, maybe some of you ladies have smaller fingers than I do and it's easier, but even at that, it's, it's kind of tight. But I guess it can be done. Tell me who's had experience with that. Maybe that's worked well for you. Rear seat pockets, well, I don't know if I'd really call those as much pockets. It's kind of a net style material, but it serves the same functionality. We'll also find the fold down armrest right there and on the rear of the center console, air conditioning vents, space right here, I don't know what would fit in there, maybe a couple of pens or pencils or something like that. And then we're going to have our, let's see, do we have anything there? Nope, just the USB ports. That looks like that's about it. And one thing I'm gonna show right here, just because I know someone's probably going to ask, obviously you have a ton of space in here, plenty of head space. I'm five foot 10, no problem there plenty of room above my head and we also have our panoramic sunroof right here and a cameo appearance and sound from a harley rider in the background hopefully you didn't hear that too well you also have your grab handles right here which actually are helpful when this vehicle is sitting up real high just makes it easier to get in and out of okay it's that time of the video that a lot of you wait for if you watch me regularly you know i'm going to give you the price Exactly what is that price? $77,618. Let's see what else you get for the price. And we'll start with the passenger side door panel over there. A very similar look to what we saw in the rear, just a little bit wider, a little bit larger. So you'll see a little bit more material and real estate there than what we saw in the rear. And I'll let Carrie give you again the armrest test right there to show you what what we get, thumbs up, so that's a good thing. No big surprises where that's concerned. A larger door bin, that's always going to be nice. You'll see more of that textured white material there as far as your finish goes. Kind of interesting to see how that would work out. Now, one thing you will not find here in the front seat area that you did find in the back. No grab handles, technically. Now, there are some grab handles right there that could be used. But out of habit, it seems like a lot of us want to reach up here out of habit because that's normal to have that there. Tell me what your thoughts are on that. So we'll let Carrie hop on inside. Obviously, before we do that, let's talk about our power seats. Power seats for the driver and the passenger for the sunroof real quick. You'll hear that going in the background. The Defender logo right there on that upper area of the dashboard above the glove box, there's a little bit of storage space right there. That's good, probably put a cell phone or something along those lines up there. You can also charge a cell phone or just connect it while you're holding it, the passenger's holding it, and the passenger can hold on to those oh crap handles that are in an unusual spot, but not a bad place for that, especially if you go off-roading. 
and depending on how the terrain works. And the glove box, a little bit of space in there. You can see what's in there at the moment, but plenty of space, that's for sure. And as we work our way over, may not be the largest screen available for Land Rover, but I like the fact that it's still the Pivi Pro infotainment screen. So everything is nice and clear, easy to deal with. You can see that we can take a look around our Defender here at multiple angles. Depending on what we want to see, we can literally see everything. So that's always nice to have that. You also have your overhead view right here as well. If you want to take a look at different angles, you can do that. There's our different angles, and you can do the same thing with the front, obviously. So that works out pretty well. And we go back home here, you're going to see everything you have as far as your navigation goes and everything you want to know about the vehicle. You can see right here, when I turn the front tires, well, it's a live view. It shows you what's going on on the screen that way when you're off-roading. See, here's something that's interesting. You'll notice where the steering wheel is right now. This is why you have that, because it looks like the steering wheel or the front wheels would be pointed straight, but notice they're turned to the left. You could get into a situation where that would be very helpful, just depending on what's going on with the vehicle. And real quick, we'll go here into settings and just see what's here. We've got a few different things, just show you what's here. There we go, audio right there. Really a pretty neat setup here. There's so much going on here. Sometimes I wonder if we shouldn't just do our separate videos on the infotainment screen by itself. Obviously, wireless capabilities for your cell phone. You have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, all that good stuff. You also have your connectivity down there. And here is a 12-volt power outlet and then our USB connectivity. And there is space underneath, really a pass-through right here. A lot of room down there. In fact, I'll remove this out of the way so you can see what's down there. It's always nice to see that space used properly. And here's something that's interesting. First of all, we've got the center console. I like the fact that it's pretty high. It can be used as an armrest. This is the refrigerated console. I'll get that out of there so we don't freeze any of this stuff. In fact, it's on right now, so it's <laughs> nice and cool in there. Or at least it feels like it's on. There we go. Now it's on, but it is nice and cool in there, that's for sure. So two different settings for that. But here's something else I wanted to show you. Here's your wireless charging pad. And you're saying, well, I'd like to have some cup holders too. Well, guess what? Let's see if I can do this. There we go. There are your cup holders. You can actually take this piece and put it right there if you want to and leave your cup holders exposed. Just something that's interesting with all of that. Obviously, we're going to have dual zone climate control right here, but there's some interesting functionality depending on what you want to do. If I wanted to use the heated seats, I could do that. So it just depends on what I'm doing here with all of that. And then we can adjust our fan speed by pushing that little button right there that has the fan with the indicator. I can change the fan speed if I want to, and we can go back out of that. Pretty easy to figure out. You can use that however you need to. Your auto stop start system, you can turn that off right there. You can really see what's what here with all of the different controls. And I know you can only hear it or see it, I should say, but we can hear the air suspension doing its thing, pushing those buttons right there to either raise or lower, depending on what we'd like to do. We can also lower that that easily. Right over here, something that's kind of simple, but it's here, and I think a lot of people like that, the control for the volume and turning the radio on and off. And our shifter right here is also kind of interesting. If you want to shift manually, you can move that over to the left, and then you can gear up or gear down like that. There's how you go into park and then your button right here to start and stop the engine. A hey, vehicle visionary watchers and YouTube watchers, more so vehicle visionary fans and YouTube watchers. Carries driving lounge again today. Land Rover Defender Edition. So you have been driving Jeeps and Broncos for a while. They're off road, they're rugged but you've decided that you want some more luxury with your off-road. You decide to get a Defender, but you're not familiar with the driving area of a Defender looks like. That's what Carrie's Driving Lounge is for. Let's see what's going on here today. On your door panel, you have your three memory seat positions here. Same on the dry, uh, passenger side also. There are your mirror controls. There are your uh, window controls. And there's the lockout for your back seats. There's your door lock and unlock button. 
down here you have a lay of the lever to open your hood interesting to the left of that you see a little tab sticking out that tab prevents you from opening your hood while the door is closed who would do that i don't know but it's there just in case anyway dead pedal gas pedal brake pedal the floor rugged floor you can use this with or without floor mats it's textured i'm assuming you can probably squirt that with a hose or something if you need to steering wheel multi-spoke like it very much very sporty looking you have a uh, column on your left and a column on your right we'll go over those in a moment and you have spokes on your steering wheel left and right defender on your airbag kind of plastic but it is what it is there's your telephone switch there are your channel controls your voice activation there's your perimeter safety for your vehicle there's your favorites button you can make something on here that you want if you want something a favorite you pick it you press that button and hold it that thing becomes your favorite whatever it is there's your wheel to adjust various things well there's volume on this particular side here and you have your cruise control over here activation your lane departure your reset your cancel your set your speed adjustment to the vehicle in front of you and your uh, heated steering wheel control over here on the right side there's your button for your uh, tilt telescope and steering wheel and the column on the left let's get to that one you have turn signal left turn signal right yep they work make sure you use them you have your light controls headlights parking lights you have front and rear fog lights right here that's what this is for rear fog light front fog lights on this side you have your wiper controls high low intermittent is also the switch for your back um, wipers also and the button you push for your squirters you have on your screen in front of you this does not have heads-up display on your screen in front of you you have speedometer you have your lane departure right there it's off right now you have a temperature gauge that shows it's 59 degrees outside this vehicle has set has 17 miles on the odometer it shows you down here how many miles you have to go on your gas 17 miles it shows that your gas tank door is on the passenger side it also shows you there also there's a clock right there it shows you it is currently 10 45 a.m in shreveport louisiana you have an rpm gauge that goes to 7,000 rpm shows that your, your seat belt warning light your park indicator that shows we are currently in park and there's your indicator telling us that we're low on fuel and we need to get some fuel before we go do a test drive there's a speedometer indicator there that tells you that the speed limit on this road is 50 miles an hour and that's your gauge cluster you have up here your visors there's a light in there there's my hat the visor comes out it does extend let's see how well it extends it covers most of the window not all I think in this vehicle that should cover all of the window but you get what you get there's your seat belt it does not adjust for height I like when they adjust for height this one does not again you know that's what you get snap that back in place there's no front visor that you can use simultaneous to the side visor but rearview mirror frameless looks very very nice and you have controls for three garage doors as an indicator for one two and three there's your button for your roof which is opening same button closes it and you can leave that in the vented position or the closed position and here's the button for your shade the shade is partially back right now and I'll push that button and the shade comes forward there's a grab handle up here on the ceiling there's a grab handle right here in the front there's no grab handle here as Tom already discussed and other than that I think uh, is this a good luxury option for off-roading compared to a Jeep or a Bronco I'd say it is if you're buying you make the decision let us know if there's something that you want us to review on the vehicle visionary channel let us know if there's something you want me to driving lounge for you that you're not familiar with how it looks from the driver's seat let me know that subscribe folks see you next time
All right, we start the video out driving over the railroad tracks that we like to use for our shocks and suspension test. And definitely good results there. No surprise when you have the air ride suspension. These defenders do ride very well for what they are, being as large as they are and off-road capable as they are. A lot of people would probably expect a rather bone-jarring Jeep-style ride, something like that. But you really don't get that with this. It's, it's a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. Like I said earlier in the video, easy to see out of. And the interior overall is comfortable. You feel very, very comfortable here, not only with the seats themselves, but also because you don't feel crowded. You don't feel you know, confined is really the best word I could probably use. And that should come as no surprise, I would assume, to most people. Definitely someone who is well in excess of six feet tall would be happy here. And it's not meant to have the greatest handling characteristics, so you're gonna find some heavy steering characteristics here, but that's not a bad thing necessarily with this style of vehicle. So a, a good thing where that's concerned. You're not looking for Range Rover Sport SVR capabilities or or even we did a we did an SV autobiography Velar a few years ago and boy you talk about fun to drive but you know, this model's very capable of what it needs to be for what it's supposed to do. Technology easy to deal with that's for sure when you need to get up and go which I would like to do if we had room to get around some of these people in front of us. We've got the car in front of us that's driving slowly and then the truck pulled over right there so we're going to take our time getting around there. But I tell you what, a lot of people, as I said earlier in the video, they hear the six cylinder, the three liter six cylinder and say, oh man, that is just not going to cut it for me. You might have to drive one before you make your decision because of the fact that they really are really peppy. It definitely gets up and goes when you need it to get up and go. That's a fact. So a very nice balance here overall way or another, you're going to get a vehicle that does extremely well in all situations. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Is this Land Rover Defender S the most luxurious 4x4? I believe it's a very luxurious at the top, pretty close if not there. That's my thought on it. Tell me what yours. Just like Carrie just asked you in the previous scene. So I do want to say a special thanks to our friends at Land Rover of Shreveport for loaning us this Defender S for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give us the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please do so. That way you don't miss any future videos or tongue twists like I just had there. Kind of sound like Elmer Fudd. You gotta laugh at something, don't you? Or was that Porky Pig? I don't know. But it was tongue twisted either way. If you wanna learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and we'll see you there.